got a question here from Edward who says that he is 31 years old and he's been training jujitsu in a gym, right, an actual gym for about four months. He says that before that he's been doing it since he was a teenager uh, via tapes and things like that from his home. He says that, you know, with this training for four months in this gym, he says he's grown immensely and he says that with this, he's kind of curious why he hasn't been promoted. He says that he's talked to his coach and says, hey, like, why am I not being promoted? I'm one of the better white belts here. What gives? And his coach comes back to him and tells him, well, you haven't been here long enough. You haven't put enough time on the mats. Edward's frustrated and he's wondering what time has to do with it. Why isn't it just based on skill? Isn't that skill what it's most important, right? And he's wondering what my thoughts on it are. And you know, in addition, he says that jiu-jitsu is sort of becoming his life passion and that he's going to leave his gym because he said he's not going to train there anymore and he's going to focus solely on training at his house um, with a uh, purple belt that he knows. So Edward, first off, thanks for the question, dude. And I can't share your coach's exact reasoning. I'm gonna share my thoughts on it and hopefully these are helpful to you. Um, and again, if you wanna get a better explanation from your coach, you need to ask them for a more thorough reasoning for this. Um, but Matt, time is very important, I think, and I'll share my reasons for it. Um, because I've had plenty of people come into the gym over the years who, you know, either from other places or they, you know, were just growing and then they started to get like, kind of like, like anxious for that belt. And they're wondering, well, why aren't you promoting me? Like, I mean, I'm good enough, I'm, I'm doing this, that, or whatever, but why aren't you promoting me? And sometimes I'll tell them, you just haven't had enough time with us. And there are reasons for it. I'll tell you a couple of them. One is that I, li I personally experienced the, the bad part of being promoted too quickly. Right, in, in my first couple belts, I was promoted very quickly uh, from blue and then to purple. And it was a problem for me personally because like, I hadn't even got to the top of the heap with a white belt yet, and then I got thrusted into the bottom of the pile with blue belt and then to purple belt, and it was really, frustrating for me to, to sort of climb my way out of it. And so with my students, I don't want to put them in the same situation. When they climb their way to the top of that pile, I want them to be able to sit in the sun for a minute, enjoy it, right? Be at the top of, of your level for just a little bit before I toss you to the bottom, right? Enjoy it for a little bit. It also has the really the, the fun way of allowing people to play a little bit more. I noticed that like my white belts, for instance, there's an explosion in their game at the end of their, like when they're like a four stripe white belt and they start to be one of the better white belts in the gym, they're winning more tournaments. They have this explosion of sort of creativity in their game because they're not hindered by the fact that like, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're at the bottom, right? They're, they're like, I'm, I'm on the top and I'm able to, I have a little bit of comfort to myself. I don't have the expectation that I have to set for myself because I'm a blue belt, right? Because when we get our blue belt, we then start to put more of a, pre a more pressure on ourselves. I'm at the top of the white belt. So you're, you're in this nice little, you know, little sweet spot where you're the best white belt in the area, but you don't have to beat the blue belts necessarily because you're not a blue belt. But then once I throw them to blue belt, things change for them because it's a mental thing for them. And so I like to let people just sit at their, their belt level a little bit. I call it seasoning, right? Seasoning at the belt. Now, in addition to this, I personally, the way that I think about training, I'm not in this to like just give people belts, right? That's not what I'm in this for. I'm in this to, you know, empower people in one way or another and I want them to be connected to a team, right? Because that to me, that's the, the community aspect, right? The, the being connected to a bunch of human beings, that to me is what's so powerful about this stuff. It's the thing that when I think about why I train over and over again, that's what I always come back to is like, I love the, the community that I'm a part of and I love being connected to all these people in such a strong way. And so that's another reason why I make people wait because I've had people come in who were probably skill wise were probably there, but I made them wait because I wanted to make sure that they became a part of the team because I want to make sure they're, they're not just in this for themselves. They're in this to make everyone else around them better, right? To, to, to bring up the team, to be connected to everyone. And so that's part of what I'm doing. And that's the reason why I make, make people wait. Now in your situation, you've been training at a gym for four years, for four months. Like if you came into my gym, Edward, I'm just sharing this as a matter of fact, if you came into my gym four months, I don't care how good you are, I'm not promoting you. And it's not because you don't have the skill, it's because I need to make sure you have commitment, right? Because I don't wanna give someone a belt and then, then they, they leave, right? Because if I give you a belt, it means I, I want you to stick with me, right? I wanna grow together, I wanna grow with you. I don't want this to be, here's your belt, now you leave. I want it to be, here's your belt, now let's keep going and let's get more, let's do more together, let's, let's build everyone else around us together, not just, here you go, all all right, later, right? And I think in your situation, you're already contemplating you're leaving the gym, right? You're already saying, I'm, I'm leaving. So I think that, you know, again, you're already halfway out of this situation anyway, so you're not really fully committed to this gym or to your instructor. And so again, I think that you're asking the instructor to be fully committed to you by giving you a belt, but you're not fully committed to them. 
right? So there's a balance. Like if the person's committed to you, you got to be committed to them back and forth. And so I think that one of the reasons that the time is important, it shows commitment, man, because commitment is what jiu-jitsu is going to take to in, in order to really progress in it, right? Because motivation, passion, that stuff kind of it ups and downs, man. Like, you know, I can tell you like times where I'm not really that motivated to train, but I train anyway because it's what I do. I'm disciplined and I'm mo- and I'm I, I'm committed to getting better and it's just what I do, right? So again, you said that this is your life's passion. And another thing I'll say is, man, you've been training at a gym for four months. You really, you may have trained at home a little bit, but training at a gym and really immersing yourself in that, that's a different, that's a different ball game. And you've only been doing it for four months. And so I don't know if you have a good read on if it's your life's passion or not. You have a read on it that you really enjoy it. But you know, the, the, I've had a lot of people over the years tell me, Chewy, this is my passion, man. I want to do this forever. And then they have like a little injury. They get a little tweak or maybe they meet a girlfriend or maybe they get a new job and they're gone. Like they're, they never come back, right? So to me, passion, motivation, all this stuff, eh, you know, whatever. It's really about are you committed to jiu-jitsu, right? Are you committed to yourself growing in this martial art? Because that's different. And so I think honestly, personally, my advice to you, Edward, right, would be to stay at your gym. Don't leave, right? If you've been there for four months and you're progressing really fast, Fantastic, dude! Don't leave that. Right? There's a reason why you're gaining great. Uh, you're getting so much better so fast because you're around people. You're around being in this community of people that's you know pushing each other. You have instruction. You have training partners. You have all these things. Don't leave that. If this is your life's passion, this is what you want to do, right? Then you need to commit yourself to it. And part of committing yourself to it is going to people, right, and being an apprentice, right? Going to someone and saying, "Listen, you know what you've done before. You've done this before, so I'm going to follow you." Right? I'm gonna follow this person that's been there, that's done that, and I'm gonna let them lead me. So this way I can get better. And they will make it so much faster and so much more effective for you. And again, that's just my thoughts on it, man. Like again, I personally would not leave your gym to train at home. It's not going to be as effective. You, you'll still get better, yes, but it's not going to be as effective. It's not going to be as efficient. And you're gonna miss out on a lot of the cool aspects that being a part of a gym can, be, can bring you. So just my thoughts, Edward. I hope this helps, brother. Uh, good luck to you in your training. And again, sorry if this is not the message you wanted to hear, um, but again, good luck to you.